Howdy, everybody. Richard Zane filling in for David Nuno on Texags Radio, and now the Texags Rewind. Full show today. We had a lot to talk about. Olin Buchanan was with us talking about how Texas A&M can probably have a lot of success on the ground against Missouri. Chris Landry joined us as he does every Wednesday to offer his scouting report. He's telling why the Aggies still can improve. We also talked to viral sensation Efridge Davis of WQAW. You've seen her and her forecast and her struggles to contain her excitement after the Aggies win. And then we also talked to Ryan Broninger about what the win over Alabama means on the recruiting front. It's the Texags Radio Rewind on a Wednesday morning. But I, look, I think A&M is going to be able to run. And when you're running well, let's face it, the, the, the pass pressure slows down because you got to, you know, you got to honor the play action as you're always going to be showing. So you expect A&M to run well. How well will they run, and will Isaiah Spiller or Devon A. Chain or perhaps both get 200 yards on the crowd? Well, I don't think they'll both get 200. Um, Do that, you think one of them gets to 200? I wouldn't be surprised, but, you know, we talked about this with David earlier this year, a couple of – I mean, earlier this week, a couple of years ago, uh, Travion Williams was on way to leading the SEC in rushing. They were playing South Carolina, which was terrible against the run. He had like 80 yards. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes – the indicators don't don't necessarily uh, the results aren't what the indicators project, but based on what I've seen from A and M and what I've seen from uh, and what I know about Missouri, yes, I would I would be willing to make a prop bet that a- an A and M running back w- would reach at uh, two hundred yards. Now that may be up to Jimbo Fisher. Do I want to give a guy 20 carries? And maybe not. It might, it might not even take 20 carries to get there. I if mean, they've been so historically bad against right. the run. You, you might get – well, it's true because, let, let's face it, uh, we've seen uh, Spiller go 50 and 60 yards. Uh, we saw him go 67 yards against Arkansas this year. So he could have a, you know, a long run or two, and then it's not that hard to get there. A-chain – you know, we we've seen what he, he can do. The ball, he can break it. So, uh, yeah. The, so the I think the possibility of big plays there. And when I did see some of uh, Missouri, they looked to me to be a little bit. I don't want to say slow, but not overly fast in the secondary. So if I think if you can break into the secondary, you've got a chance to have a big play. I mean, a really big play. And on top of that, their best corner, who I think is their best corner, Enos Rakestraw, uh, torn ACL in practice last wow. week. So he's out for the year. So, that, 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 again, that plays in through the hands of the Aggie running game. Right. Uh, what, the game plan was really, really good. And what they put together against Alabama was what we call unscouted looks. There were things on the offensive line that they were doing personnel-wise and schematically that were a little bit different that Alabama couldn't scout because they weren't there on film. Hadn't done it. It took a little while, a little – Normally what happens is, okay, we're not seeing that. So you go to the sideline and you try to figure things out, try to get feedback from the players from upstairs. And it was a little bit of an adjustment, a little bit of cat and mouse. Now, once Alabama was able to figure it out, you saw the offense get stymied a little bit. So those are things that now, now that you got that on film, what can you do alternatively to continue to grow? So obviously, as I said, well, well, moving the pocket worked great. Let's do that all the time. Well, when you do that, there's a formula for that too. So it's going to be about you work some of that, but then you're going to have to become a little bit better in the pocket um, when you're not able to, because if everything is roll out, then what you can consistently do is defensively, defensively, you become a little bit easier to defend with just half field reach, but sometimes it can help the running game. So what you got to do is mix things up a little bit more. And then you've got to really have a little bit more that you can build in. But the point I'm I'm kind of making overall is you have to have the – it doesn't matter what you run. It The playbook is yay thick. And uh, for those that are not watching on TV, it's just – it's a mound of – it's in computers now. But it is so thick. It doesn't matter how much you got in there. It's how much the players can handle. And so – the further you get along offensive line receivers, I thought the receivers did a better job 
with stemming their routes. All of those things together is as a, what as a coach you try to do to get a little bit better so that you can do more. The old saying, you know, it's just like anybody working in any, you give somebody a job in the mailroom. They do that well. You give them a little more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Coaching and players are the same thing. They, they, there are certain much they can handle, and you're only as good as the, what your weakest link can handle. It was like really nerve wracking because um, we actually have like severe weather possibilities for like Monday. So I'm trying to like let people know like here's our radar, like here's our rain. We're expecting this. Here we have some severe weather with damaging winds and tornadoes being a possibility. So I'm still trying to like do my job and be like, yes, um, that like and definitely one of the reasons why I really wanted to like switch with sports and do my block after sports or sports go first because I was like. I need to let people know about the weather tomorrow, but also this A&M game. Um, and so I'm just like getting my weather, trying to go and get um, and talk. And I'm talking really fast when I watch it back, like even the beginning part. I'm like, oh, yeah, here's the radar and trying to give like the time. It was very difficult. I think it's, again, judge the season on its entirety. I think obviously the win the other night for the 2021 season purposes is enormous and the program purposes is enormous. But – you still got to go play six more weeks, and uh, this is the same team that lost to Arkansas and Mississippi State. Uh, I think they played more toward their talent level on Saturday night, the, the talent level that we expected them to have coming into the season. For whatever reason, it took them a little bit to jail, uh, but that was the team that we thought we were going to see. So, you know, what do you get going forward for these last six weeks? Do you get the team that showed up against Arkansas and Mississippi State, or do you get the team that showed up against Bama, or is it somewhere in between, you know? Um, there's a thought, you know, that people are talking about the maturity of this team and having to go to Columbia, Missouri at 11 o'clock after that win against Bama, what kind of maturity, what kind of leadership do you have on the flip side of it from a coach? You're going, okay, there, there's a possibility that we sleepwalk through this thing. There's also a possibility that during that last week of practice and then having success against Bama, that we finally figured out who we are and what it takes to perform at that level. Um, and, and that performance should give a lot of guys a, a good amount of confidence going out and playing throughout the rest of the season, right? So we'll see how they handle the rest of the season on the field. But from a recruiting standpoint, Saturday night could not have been any better. Could not have been any better. And from the official visits from Walter Nolan and Marquise uh, Groves Killebrew, both guys from out of state, I think you left a really indelible impression. We have – Posted multiple updates on Walter. Uh, I think A&M is – nobody has come out and told me this, Richard, but just based on the post-visit reports that we've gotten, a and the leader. I mean, it's wow. the way that things are being said to us and communicated to us and, and what – like the impression, but also um, the connections that Walter and his family have made in College Station – it's hard for me to listen to all that and say, okay, a and still playing from behind. I think he's going to Tennessee this weekend, and I think Tennessee is trying to catch A&M. Wow. And all right, everybody, that's going to do it for us here on a Wednesday morning. David Nuno hopefully back in the host chair tomorrow. Lost his voice, couldn't do the show this morning. Hoping he's back tomorrow. Hopefully I did a good enough job pinch hitting. Like, subscribe, comment on this video, do all that fun stuff. It's been the Texags Radio Rewind.